Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're looking to learn real world networking, make sure you stick around. Let's get started. So let's go compare this setup with the actual hardware in front of us. So here we have a PC that connects to our Switch, which will be in VLAN 10. I'm using a Microsoft Surface Pro as my laptop. We have a 2960 Switch that will serve as our access Switch. I actually have the Cisco Catalyst 2960 over here. Then we have a 3560 that will serve as our distribution switch. And here's the Cisco Catalyst 3560. And finally, we have our main router and we're using a Cisco 1921. In this video, we'll be configuring VLANs, trunking, sub-interface, and DHCP, key concepts for network segmentation and inter-VLAN communication. All right, before we start configuring anything, let's check the current IP configuration on my laptop. You can see my wireless local area network adapter has got an IP address from the DHCP server from my home Wi-Fi router. But what we need is an IP address for our Ethernet connection. As you can see right here, Ethernet 2. That's my network adapter that I purchased for this laptop. As you can see, there's no configuration. There's no IP address. So we'll have to configure everything from scratch. We'll do this by configuring a DHCP server to hand out IP addresses to the network. Now, let's get everything wired up. First, I'm connecting my laptop to Fast Ethernet 0 slash 24 on the access switch. As soon as I plug it in, you'll notice the port starts blinking. That means it's detecting a connection and running data. Next, access to distribution. I'm connecting from Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 on the access switch to Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 on the distribution switch. Actually, you know what? Let's match the port numbers for consistency. I'll switch this to fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 on the access switch instead. As you can see, we have port switching from down to up. Finally, switch to router. I'll connect the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 on the distribution switch to G0 slash 1 on the router. Now we have our basic topology set up. With the physical connections done, let's jump into the switch configuration and get everything running. I'm consoled into my access switch using a USB to serial adapter. From here, we'll begin setting up our VLAN and trunking. All right, let's start configuring VLANs. I'll enter the interface configuration mode for F0 slash 24 and set it as an access port. What's interesting is that if the VLAN doesn't already exist, the switch will automatically create it for us. Let's verify that the VLAN was created and the port is correctly assigned. As you can see, VLAN 10 is now listed and Fast Ethernet 0 slash 24 is assigned to it. Now, here's something important to notice. Every time we configure a port, you'll see the LED go from green to yellow for a few seconds before turning green again. This happens because of spanning tree protocol, STP. Spanning tree temporarily puts the port into a listening and learning state to prevent potential loops before bringing it back up. 
In real-world networks, this can cause unnecessary delays, especially for devices like PC, printers, or phones that don't need loop protection. To avoid this delay on edge devices, we should enable port fast on the access ports. This right here is an important reminder. Port fast should only be used on edge devices like PC, printers, or IP phones. All right, with VLAN 10 set up and port fast configured, let's move on to trunking between our switches. We'll be creating a trunk from access switch F0 slash 2 to distribution switch F0 slash 2. To configure this port as a trunk, I'll enter interface configuration mode for F0 slash 2 and set the port to trunking mode. I will then make sure it can carry traffic for multiple VLANs. Let's verify everything is working by running the show interface trunk command. As you can see, the trunk is up and active. We've got fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 listed as a trunk port and is successfully carrying VLAN 10. Before we move on, let's verify that VLAN 10 is properly configured on the access switch. As you can see, VLAN 10 is listed and is correctly assigned to F0 slash 24 where my laptop is connected. So now I'll be switching the console cable to the distribution switch and start its configurations. Now that we're console into the distribution switch, the first thing we'll do is configure the F0 slash 2 trunk link to allow VLAN 10 traffic. On some older Cisco switches, you must specify that you want 802.1Q encapsulation. Without specifying the encapsulation method, the switch won't allow the trunk configuration to be applied. This command tells the switch to use 802.1Q to tag the Ethernet frames with the VLAN ID. Without this, the trunk link wouldn't function and the switch would throw an error. Before we can fully use VLAN 10 on the distribution switch, we need to create it. This ensures that the switch knows what to do with traffic tagged as VLAN 10. Next, we'll configure Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 on the distribution switch as a trunk, which will connect to the router. At the other end of this link, we'll create a sub interface on the router for VLAN 10. The reason we're using a trunk here is that we need to carry VLAN 10 traffic from the switch to the router, allowing the router to route traffic between VLANs. So let me show you what will happen if we don't specify the 802.1Q. The command was rejected. So by specifying dot one Q, we're enabling trunking and ensuring multiple VLANs can be transported across the link, all properly tagged. Now that we configured the trunk link on the distribution switch, it's time to move on to the router. To do this, we'll console into the router and configure the sub interface with VLAN 10. Just like with the switches, the router needs to know about VLAN 10 so it can route traffic between VLANs. We'll do this by creating a sub interface with VLAN 10 on the router's trunk port. Now that we are on the router, the first thing we need to do is bring up the G0 slash 1 interface because as you can see, the interface is currently shut down.
In the real world, interfaces on routers are sometimes administratively shut down for various reasons. In our case, we need to bring this interface up so it can start transmitting traffic. To bring up G0-1, we'll enter interface configuration mode and use the no shutdown command. And there you go. Now that we brought the interface up, it is ready to pass traffic. We'll move on to the next step and configure the sub interface for VLAN 10. In a real world scenario, routers don't have physical interface for each VLAN. Instead, we use sub interfaces to logically split a single physical interface into multiple virtual interfaces, each tied to a different VLAN. This allows the router to perform inter VLAN routing. Here we're creating a sub interface on G0 slash 1 for VLAN 10. We are using the encapsulation.1q10 command to specify that this sub interface will handle VLAN 10 traffic. We also assign an IP address to the sub interface to serve as the default gateway for devices in VLAN 10. Again, this is our default gateway. Let's verify everything. There it goes, our sub interface has been created and everything is up. Now that we configured the sub interface for VLAN 10, we need to set up a DHCP server on the router. This will dynamically assign IP addresses to the devices in VLAN 10 so they can communicate on the network. To configure the DHCP server for VLAN 10, we'll use the following commands. We'll exclude the default gateway IP address. Then we'll create a pool named DHCP10. We'll add our network 10110 255-255-255-0. Default gateway 10111. That is our sub interface IP address. DNS server 8844. Four. That is the public Google server. There you go. Now let's verify that the DHCP server is properly configured. To check if the DHCP server is working correctly, let's check the DHCP pool. This command shows details about the VLAN 10 DHCP pool, including how many IP addresses are available, how many have been leased, and the range of IPs that are being handed out. Check this out. We can see that one IP address has been leased already. This is likely the IP address assigned to my laptop. This confirms that the DHCP server is working properly. Let's run a quick show running config to double check everything. Now let's check the IP DHCP binding. Here we can see the IP addresses that was handed out 10112. The MAC address of the laptop the date and showing that it was automatic. This shows the DHCP process is functioning as expected, but let's go to the laptop for a final confirmation. Okay, so everything looks good here. Now let's confirm the IP address on the laptop to ensure everything is set up properly.
Here we can see the wireless adapter which already has an IP address. If I scroll up a bit, we can confirm that the Internet 2 adapter has successfully received an IP address from the DHCP server. Notice that the MAC address of the Ethernet adapter matches what we saw in the DHCP binding on the router. The IP address here is the new one assigned by the DHCP server. We also have the correct gateway and the DNS server address. Now to confirm connectivity, I'll ping the default gateway to make sure the laptop can communicate with the router. So there you have it, the network is fully functional with VLAN 10 configured, trunking in place and the DHCP server distributing IP addresses to devices. This is the first of many tutorials where we'll use real equipments instead of simulation tools like Packet Tracer. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.